Welcome. Let's talk about exponents. To get us going, let me just write down the doubling numbers. What I mean by this is start with the number 1, and we'll double it to get 2, double that to get 4, double that get 8, 16, 32, and so forth. Now we understand that most of these numbers really are just products of the number 2. For example, 8 is really 2 times 2 times 2, and 32 is really 2 multiplied by itself 5 times. It gets very tedious to write this out, so people use a little exponent, a little a superscript, 2 to the 5th, to mean multiply 2 by itself 5 times. 2 to the 3rd means multiply 2 by itself thrice. 4 is 2 squared, so that's 2 to the 2, and so forth. Um, it seems natural that we want to call this guy 2 to the 1, even though our wording starts to get a bit strange, multiply 2 by itself 1 time. I'm not quite sure what that means, so, so a little dubiously I will write 2 to the 1 equals 2. But here's where exponents get tricky. It seems natural to say there's a pattern going on. 2 to the 5th is 32, 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 3rd is 8, next one is 2 squared is 4, 2 to the 1th is 2, so maybe I should call this 2 to the 0. But I'm a little nervous about that. Multiply 2 by itself 0 times, 2 to the 0 is 1, that seems strange. In fact, what about other numbers? 2 to the negative 1, multiply 2 by itself negative 1 times? Makes no sense. Or 2 to the half, multiply 2 by itself half a time? That's what I mean by tricky exponents. So how can we properly make sense of these quantities? Well, many people do like to believe in patterns, and I guess in some sense the pattern will reveal an answer to us if we like it. Let me write down these doubling numbers again. Here goes. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Going to the right, the numbers are doubling. So uh, going to the left, we notice the numbers are halving. So, oh sorry, let's do this. 2 cubed is 8. 4 is 2 squared. 2 is 2 to the 1. It seems natural to say this is 2 to the 0. The next one will be 2 to the 1 less, 2 to the negative 1. The next one will be 2, 1 less, negative 2, and so forth. But what numbers go at the top? Well, 8 halved is 4. 4 halved is 2. 2 halved is 1. 1 halved is a half. And a half halved is a quarter, and so on. So maybe it seems like we should associate the number 1 half with 2 to the negative 1, and 1 quarter with 2 to the negative 2, and so on. OK, this is very much just trusting patterns, but I don't think it helps me with the quantity 2 to the 1 half. Maybe it belongs somewhere in here, so is 2 to the 1 half 1 1.5 perhaps? Who knows? Uh, some teachers like to help kids get a, a grasp of exponents in this way by really doing a physical model. Let's suppose we have a piece of paper. If I fold it in half one time, it will look like this. One fold gives me two layers. If I fold it in half twice, let's take this, this uh, picture here and fold it in half again, I get a picture that looks something like this. So two folds corresponds to four layers. If I physically had a piece of paper with me right now, I could do the three folds and you would see eight layers. So it seems natural to say that 2 to the 1 fold is 2, 2 to the 2 folds is 4, 2 to the 3 folds is 8. So maybe 2 to the no folds is just a piece of paper that has not been folded. That's one layer. I can attempt to make sense of this. 2 to the negative 1 folds. That means do the opposite of folding. What does that mean? It means take this piece of paper, instead of folding in half, let's see if we can split it apart by tearing it this way, and we get a great big thin strip that I guess is only half a layer. So maybe I can make sense of this. 2 to the negative 1 is really half a layer of paper. But things are still tricky. I still do not know what to do with 2 to the 1 half. Fold a piece of paper in half, fold half, half a time? No idea what that could mean. All right. All fancy stuff, people like to play with all sorts of games, try to make sense of what could two to various exponents mean. Let me give you the true mathematical reasoning. All right, it seems natural to say that, oh, where's my paintbrush, here goes. Two cubed times two to the fifth. When these are positive whole numbers, I feel I have no trouble making sense of that. Two cubed is two multiplied by itself three times. And then I wish to multiply that by 2 multiplied by itself 5 times. And it's very obvious I now have 2 multiplied by itself 8 times. So at least for positive whole numbers, 2 to the a times 2 to the b should be 2 to the a plus b. All right. That seems perfectly natural, perfectly normal, and perfectly right. 
here's the game that mathematicians play. Does this rule feel so right, so natural, so normal that it should work for all types of numbers? It's clear for positive whole numbers, but should it work for every type of number? If you choose to say yes, then there are going to be logical consequences. And some of the logical consequences would be how can we deal with exponents to non-positive whole numbers. For example, let's do indeed play the game. We shall now make this the absolute law. That's a choice. You do not have to believe this. In fact, you can invent a different type of mathematics where this law does not hold. But if this is the law, here are some consequences. For example, according to the law, what would 2 to the 0 times 2 cubed be? Well, the law says to add exponents. So 2 to the 0 plus 3 is 3. So the law tells me that 2 to the 0, whatever this beast is, times 8, must equal 8. I now have no choice to say that 2 to the 0 must be 1. Great! 2 to the 0 is 1. If I choose to believe this law as a logical consequence, 2 to the 0th power is 1. What about 2 to the negative 1? Can we use our law to make sense of that? Sure. 2 to the negative 1 times 2, and I'll make it 4 this time. According to the law, it would be 2 to the negative 1 plus 4. That is 3. So what's this really saying? Something mysterious times 2 to the 4th, that's actually 16, is 8. What time 16 gives me 8? Well, I have no choice but to say the number half. As another consequence of this law, pure logic, 2 to the negative 1 is a half. I bet now you could use this law to explain, as pure consequence, why 2 to the negative 2 must be a quarter, or 2 to the negative 5 must be 1 32th, and so forth. But let me go to the one we couldn't handle earlier, the one that's very interesting. 2 to the 1 half. Can we use this law to make sense of 2 to the 1 half? I don't know what it means to multiply 2 by itself half a time. I don't know what it means to fold a piece of paper in half, half a time. Here goes. Well, the trick is to multiply this by something to get pieces we can handle. Most people might say we can try multiplying by, say, 2 squared, and you get 2 to the 2 and a half, but that's not very helpful. I have no idea what 2 to the 2 1 half is, so I can't get a grip on this at all. Maybe the trick is to be very, very sneaky and multiply by 2 to the half again. 2 to the half times 2 to the half, according to the law, should be 2 to the half plus half is 1. What's this saying? It's saying that 2 times something oops, times itself equals 2. That tells me the, the, the object must be the square root of 2. As a pure logical consequence, we now know that 2 to the 1 half must be the square root of 2. Can we go further? What must 2 to the 1 third be? Let me write this down, make myself some space. 2 to the 1 third. Well, if we extend our law a little, 2 to the 1 third times 2 to the 1 third would be 2 to the 2 thirds. Not very helpful. But let's take this to three numbers. 2 to the 1 third times 2 to the 1 third times 2 to the 1 third should be 2 to the third plus a third plus a third is 1. That is something times itself three times is 2. I have no, for, no choice but to now believe that 2 to the 1 third is the cube root of 2. And so on. So this is the true mathematics behind why folks say that 2 to the 1nth is the nth root of 2, and 2 to the negative n is 1 over 2 to the positive n, and so forth. All those rules are really a game of logic. Do we choose to believe this, this rule as a law? If so, then one has no choice but to say 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the negative 1 is a half, and so on. 2 to the half is root 2. That's the scoop.